My oldest son is coming from Texas, coming back to where I live here in Florida. Nice. And he uh, he went over to Texas because that was where things were – his business sent him. Yeah. And that's where he was making the most uh, amount of money for himself in there. Uh, and then he was coming back uh, just to kind of hang out over here on this side of things because he wants to start a business over here and do some stuff with the money that he's been putting away to kind of keep things flowing. You know what I mean? Um, so he was driving in a truck that he just bought, a, you know, about a month or so back. And uh, around midnight, there was a semi on the highway that pushed him off the road. Uh, he tried to correct. It made his vehicle go into the ravine on the side of the highway. And this was around midnight. I, and uh, the, here's the crazy thing about it, brother. I said, what happened after that, you know, after the accident? I said, did the semi stop? He's like, no. I said, did a bystander stop? He said, no. I said, well, what happened? He said, I waited a half hour before someone, anyone stopped to ask if I was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a scary fact that that's society today. If uh, my daughter was trying to ask me the same question, she's like, well, maybe no one saw him. I'm like, have you driven down the highway? You can see a turned over vehicle in the highway. When an accident happens, they pull the traffic away. They move the vehicle. It's not something that's going to stay there. Yeah. Uh, and she was like, oh, and I said, so ask my son, did you have any type of medical gear in your vehicle? He's like, no. I said, did you have at least a seatbelt cutter or a knife in your vehicle? He said, no. And I said, did you have any other alternate forms of communication or any type of survival equipment in general in your vehicle? He said, no. So then we got into that conversation, which I was like, all right, you're okay, right? You're not, anything's broken, anything, you know, no lacerations. He's like, no, I'm fine. I'm just a little hurt. Uh, And I said, so here's the reason why I do what I do. Here's the reason why I carry ultimate forms of different forms of communication in my vehicle, because his phone was thrown from the vehicle, lost in the woods somewhere. Ah. Uh, why I carry tourniquets and med kits, because I said, son, if something would have happened where you were had a ba- bad laceration where you're bleeding out 30 minutes, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. Yeah. And I went into my That's spiel true. about medical preparedness and why your vehicle has to be an extension of your home and stuff like that. And he took that to heart and he's like, all right, dad, show me how I can, because he wants to buy another vehicle, another truck. Good. He said, show That's me awesome. what I need uh, in case a situation like this arises. Uh, but it was a wake up moment because you know yeah. what exactly what he told me, Rudy? He said, I never thought it would happen to me. Yeah, yeah, that's how it always is. Uh, you know uh, what I like about Fairbanks, Alaska? That a couple of years ago, I got, uh, I lost control of my vehicle. It was around this time. I hit some black ice and I was off, off the road. And probably within a one hour time span, I had about 40, I remember counting the first hour. I had about 47 people stop and ask me, are you all right? So that's one thing that gives me hope about the community in this surrounding area in case something ever happened where we had to work together. When I have yeah. conversations with people, they always say, you know, it'll never happen in America. It'll never happen in my city. it never happen in my town. It'll just never happen to me, folks. You just never know. You can wake up that next day and the lights could be off for good for several years. You just don't know. Well, I think that's going to happen, Gray. That's going to eventually happen. Oh, absolutely. Eventually, we will lose grid power for a very, very long time. So, you know what? That's one thing that I would say. A lot of people ask me, what should I prepare for? And, and some people are like, I'm prepping for an economic collapse. You know, I'm prepping for the Madrid, you know, fault line, you know, earthquake. Or, you know, one thing that I can say for sure is that you should prepare for a long-term power outage situation. Long-term Absolutely. meaning year or years. Because the cycle tells us and the technology by which we live today tells me that that's going to happen eventually. Uh, because uh, what's happened is is that uh, between Congress, between the Department of Energy, between the Department of Homeland Security, and between the power companies, they keep throwing the hot potato as to who should pay for our electric grid to get uh, to become a EMP or coronal mass ejection you know, what do you call it? Protected from EMP or coronal mass ejection. So they've just been passing that hot potato along for many years now, and no one's really done anything about it. So I would say, if you were to ask me, what should I prepare for? I would say for a lights out situation that's going to last a very long time. Mm -hmm. And with that, 
pretty much all of the same preps that you would get for anything else. I would say probably besides like power generation for long term and a way to do power generation for long term is pretty much the same way that you would prep for anything else. You're still going to need food. You're still going to need water, water purification, a way to grow food when you run out of food, you know, shelter, heat, medicine, self-defense, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Still going to need all those things. But uh, I would say that that's what I, I would say that we should prepare for, for sure, because that's for sure going to happen. I think it'll happen in my lifetime. Uh, but then again, we can never really put a date on these things because uh, it's a 150 year cycle and it's been about 115 years since it last happened. So you just never know exactly when it's gonna, it's gonna hit, but it will hit eventually. It's funny that you had said this in your video because it's a spot that I'm lacking as well. Faraday cages, EMPing, yeah. proofing certain things and stuff like that. And I spent probably a couple of days ago, like hours researching uh, EMP ways to, you know, sure up things because what's good is a power station or, you know, other, gadgets that we have for emergency preparedness yep. if we don't have a way to shield them or protect them so that when the emergency presents itself you know we have a way to use them so i watch suspicious observers right and mm -hmm. i think you do as well and uh i download their app and i just follow them because they're full of good information and about a week or so ago he had put out a video the sun is doing some weird stuff uh earthquakes incoming right and three days later after that video new york gets hit by two quakes and he was spot on. So he, he's not a type of channel to scare you to death. He's just trying to give you the information yep. or the tools necessary to be informed and to, hey, be prepared. Something's going to happen. And it does. Like he has a good track record. Let's say we did have something like that. And let's say that, you know, we were prepped really good. You know, we have Faraday cages for all our solar generators and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, well, what percentage of the population has that? What percentage of the population would be able to salvage all of their, you know, technology with Faraday cages and all that kind of stuff, right? And then I, I, I came to think, probably very small. I'm like, so what are you going to do, AP, with all your solar generators that are protected? And now what are you going to do? You, you're going to power a fridge, maybe? Did your fridge survive? Do you have your, your fridge EMP proof? Although a fridge, if anything was going to survive, I would say a refrigerator or, or a freezer and a microwave would probably survive because most of those are metal all the way around, except for the gaskets. Uh, so yeah, I was just thinking out loud there. I was like, I was like, what are you going to power? You know, when, if this ever happens, but I guess we'll find out one day. I 100% believe that it uh, was it Anthony Blinken that mentioned, I guess he said Ukraine will be a part of NATO. I think he said that in, uh, in a conversation on the news uh, or with some conversation he was having. And I thought to myself, uh, does he mean like now? like immediately in the aspect of like while Russia's already there and doing, you know, the, the war is going on because then that would automatically bring us into the fold of World War III would be my assumption, right? Well, I mean, great. That's what they want. Anyone here that doesn't think that at least this administration, right? I can't talk about the last one because the last administration under Orange Man Bad, we didn't have any new conflicts, right? right. It, it, was, it, it was the only time in my life that I remember the Middle East being at peace. Yeah. Right? Uh, and um, uh, we didn't have any new conflicts or anything like that. Uh, but under this one, man, I believe that, you know, when you've done really, really bad things, you have to do even worse things to be able to cover them up. So I believe that there's going to be really bad things happening here in the second half of this year. Because it looks like Orange Man Bad is going to come back on the scene. You know, unless something happens towards the end of the year there where it stops, you know, the process, where, where it stops the process of the, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the, um, uh, what do you call it? Of that, of, you know, that game where they pick a new <laughs> captain. <laughs> it's pretty sad that we have to talk like this, but I think everyone here understands that we do, you know, so, so there, they may have to stop the process one way or another because uh, the truth is coming out in too many different ways because the people i believe have had enough yeah it's uh i was watching another i guess iran has spoken and said i guess israel hit somewhere something in damascus over in syria or something like that uh consulate or killed somebody one of their main generals or something like that i don't have the specifics in front of me and they told the u.s like hey this is our business 
stay out of it. And the U.S. said, as long as you don't hit none of our assets and, and all this other jazz, and it's just like it's just getting inching closer and closer. And if Iran gets in fully involved into this Middle East crisis that's going on, uh, you think gas prices are expensive now? They will skyrocket, folks. They yep. will skyrocket. You better be storing up your gas. One of the one of the things that I really dislike doing every year during the non-winter months is rotating my gas because I mm -hmm. have a lot of it, man. I have enough gas to power my house. I don't know for a full winter if I have to. You know, gasoline. I mean. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I'm putting out a video probably later on tonight or tomorrow on how much gasoline it would take for you to power your home as far as the essentials go uh, using a combination of a gasoline generator and a solar generator. And when you see how many gallons it takes, it's really not that much. I was talking to my wife about it. I was like, man, that's actually really cheap. I was looking at, uh, you know, in regards to predictions, you know what I mean? And back going kind of circling back to over to your conversation i think you might have even brought this up in one of your previous videos or live streams read about nostradamus some of his 2024 predictions uh currently are this includes a war with china and the dethroning of king charles oh cool well i heard that king charles is uh ill i heard that he has cancer have you heard that Okay, hey, Gray, I think that you are stuck. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't really wish an illness or any ill will towards anyone. So I know that as soon as you say something positive towards anyone on the internet, some people may have something negative to say, but I'm just going to say let's wish him the best and his family the best that he recovers. I know that that's what I would like someone to say toward me, whether they like me or not, if I were ill as well. So we'll leave it at that, though. He was also talking about saying goodbye to Pope Francis at the beginning, uh, saying goodbye to there could no, according to Nostradamus, we could also be saying goodbye to Pope Francis. He also states that the beginning of a third world war, 79 years after the end of the second one, which would land in 2024. And he also predicted. Wow, a did he really say that? Yeah. 79 and, years. Well, the thing is, is I believe that we are in a world war right now. But oh, what I, I think is happening now, Gray, I think right now that countries, nations are secretly picking sides. It's not something that I'm excited about or mm -hmm. that I want to happen because uh, this next world war, according to Charles Nenner, who is a cycles analyst, a very good one, is going to be very, very tragic. There's going to be in the billions, not millions, in the billions of casualties. Uh, in this next world war, which leads me to think that maybe there will be nuclear warheads used in this next world war, but we don't know that until it happens. And there's nothing that we can do about it. That's what you don't hear me talk about this too often uh, because there's nothing that we can do about it. You know, so continue to live your lives and continue to prepare and continue to stay prepared. That's all that you can really do about it. Unless there is a way that you can have influence upon our crooked politicians that uh, take us to war, but never go to war. Uh, the last thing that I have on here, I, I just took some of them because I didn't want to be here all night with it, but um, a large environmental disaster, writing at the time, the dry earth will grow more parched and there will be a great flood when it is seen. However that you want to you know, decipher that, but those oh. are just some of the things that he has been predicting for this year in 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and you know what? That thing about uh, big floods uh, reminds me about Suspicious Observer and the story about Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. which is such a scary story that I think I've shared it once on this channel and haven't again because, again, I came... This was years ago that I shared that story. Uh, and the first place that I that I heard it was not in Suspicious Observer. It was over at uh, Diamond in the... I always forget the name of his darn YouTube channel. His name is Diamond. Oppenheimer Ranch Project. That's the name of the YouTube channel. The first time I heard it was there. And uh, it's one of those things that I realized that there's absolutely nothing that we can do about that. Nothing whatsoever. Put it through a filter. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what your water source is. It doesn't matter how clean you think it is. Put it through a filter. Even if you're getting water out of a well, 
that's been good for the last 50 years, put that water through a filter. If you're worried about the the minerals and the pH that's coming out of there because the RO <laughs> system is taking it all out of there, go ahead and get an RO system that adds that, that acidity back to it. No big deal, mm -hmm. but put it through a filter. You just never know from day to day if the water source that you're using to eat and drink with is going to be good. Don't take someone's word for it. Check it for yourselves. Put it through a filter. I think everyone in America should have learned a big lesson during the Flint, Michigan era of where mm. so many people lost their lives, so many kids got brain cancer and stuff like that because they were being told by the state that the water was good to drink. And the entire time it wasn't. And unfortunately, what I remember reading is that the state knew it wasn't the entire time they were telling them that it was. So put your water through a filter. It doesn't have to come from Simpure. Get it from wherever you want, but put it through a filter. Some people love review videos. Some people hate review videos, man. But I, I feel that review videos has to be a part of YouTube because all I ever do is watch review videos before I ever buy anything myself. So yeah, me too. No matter what it is. And the thing is, is a lot of people complain about the review videos. And my thing is, is like, just don't watch them if you don't like them. But I still do them. Like a review video gets not that many views at all right so if we were if we were playing the views game we wouldn't do review videos you know what i mean absolutely uh, but every single time i do a review video i get two different comments and in some cases emails <laughs> i get one kind of comment that says oh another review video oh of course you're gonna leave a link right that's one <laughs> of the kind of comments that i get but the other comment that I get, and more likely in the form of an email, is someone saying, man, thank you so much for reviewing this, because my mm -hmm. husband didn't know that this existed, and now that you reviewed it and he sees how good it is, we're definitely going to get one for our preps. So I do it for the people that are looking for something in that category, that want to know what's the best thing for them, and they can compare my experience to maybe what they would use it for. And then they can decide whether yes or no, I'm going to go with this or not. That's who I do it for. Uh, but yeah, I always get two kinds and that's why I continue to do it. Because almost every single review video that I get, I always get an email or a comment saying, man, thanks so much for reviewing this. Yeah, love is everything. I agree 100%. Between Rudy and my wife, who have both said, look, Try not to take it personally and just blow it off. You know, when people say negative things, I finally, because I used to take everything personally. I used to like... You know, yeah. it would irk me because th they just didn't understand what I was trying to do or why I was doing what I was doing. And now uh, now I just make light of it and joke with it. You know what I mean? Because they're leaving a comment, so it's helping the channel out. So let them be, you know, say whatever they're going to say uh, and whatnot. And I move past it because I really enjoy you guys out there who watch us and come to like on these live streams. You guys that are so interactive, you guys know that seven o'clock. You're here. You're going to hang out with Rudy and Gray. We're going to talk about some important things. We're going to go on some rabbit holes and go this way and that way. But you still enjoy the show and you come here every week and hang out with us. And uh, it's truly appreciated. But uh, you want to take a do you want do you want me to share with you my uh, my gold uh, chart real quick? Sure. Go ahead. I mean, even silver's up, man. And the reason I asked you if you want me to share this with you is because during my last live stream on Friday, I was going to share this with everyone, and then I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just me messing around, but I just want to show you something, and I'm not sure how many uh, may remember this, but here, a few videos back, can you see that good? Okay, good. A few videos back, I think it was on one of my news videos during the weekend, mm -hmm. I went ahead and did this. I showed everyone what a a bull flag pattern look like and i showed you all that this when you have a straight line going up like this and you have these you see these white lines that kind of like looks like a flag on a pole that that's mm -hmm. a very bullish sign and then back then this right here wasn't here anymore see this new stuff that wasn't there mm -hmm. and then i said now what's going to happen is is as soon as we break away from this top of the flag it's going to go up around this much because this much right here is about the distance between the first breakout and the top of the flag. See? 
Oh, wow. Okay. So I was like, okay, so it's going to go up at least. And I'm always conservative, and I put it at the bottom of the flag. All right, you can put it up here if you want. All right, which that one worked out a little bit better, putting it up there. But I'm always conservative and going, okay, this is, my, this is where I'm thinking it's going to go. Uh, but it actually went up this way. So now what I think is going to happen is the same thing that happened here, where it's going to go up and down. It's going to find a range. It's going to go up and down, up and down. Because this is building another perfect bull flag. So it's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. And then it's going to break out again. And now the big picture, where I think we're going to be, I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own research. This, was, this is just what I think, ladies and gentlemen. I have to say this because I'm on the internet. The big picture where I think we're going to be uh, toward the end of the year is you see this line right here. This Thank is you. the line that I used to measure the decade-long cup and handle pattern, which is one of the most, if not the most, bullish pattern in technical analysis. And this line starts right around here where the handle broke out. And this is where that line goes. So I'm looking at around 2,900. And that, Gray, is going to be the beginning. Once we hit that 2,900, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that will be the beginning of the next true decadal long bull market. So we've got a long way to go, but it's mostly up. There's going to be its volatility. There's going to be down days. Just like here, we had down days. We had down days, but mostly the pattern or, or the... Um, uh, the trend is going to be upward. Uh, what did that gentleman say? Who was that? The 49th? Yes. Oh, no, that's great. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, if you can sell something like gold and silver, which is something that, that is of value for something that can bring you more value in the long term, absolutely, that's what it's for. It's money. It's real money. That's what you're supposed to use it for. So that's great. So let me take, you want to take a quick look at silver? Silver is about the same thing. Check out silver. I'm glad you said that. Now I know how to pronounce it, the 49th state. I, I yeah, butchered it before. So take a look <laughs> at silver, Gray. Does this look uh, a little bit like the gold chart that I just showed you? Absolutely. Look at this. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, we're silver. Let's go ahead and do this. Bam. And when you have a, a flag that's pointing down like this one, it's even more bullish <laughs> than one that's like straight. Bam, right? So now let's go ahead and do this from here, roughly, to the breakout. Look at that, Gray. <laughs> Look at that. That's silver. So now silver is going to start working on the flag, and then it's going to boom, go back up. If I take out the decade long, silver's been on. Silver has a, uh, let me bring it down. I hope I'm not boring anyone with this. But let me bring silver all the way down to a, a, mo a monthly, and I'm going to show you what I mean by a decade long. Look at this. This is called a cup and handle. It's build the cup. And then here's the handle that it's working on. Now, in order to find out what the breakout may be, you go from the top of the cup all the way to the bottom of the cup, roughly. And then you're going to go over here. Silver, we're looking at about 70 bucks. And that, when it hits $70, that's going to be the beginning of the next decades-long bull market. It's going to be huge. Man, 70 bucks. I'm rich. I don't need to play the lotto anymore. Let's see something real quick. <laughs> what does the orange man say? It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Huge. <laughs> huge, folks. Huge. Uh, but yeah, uh, silver in our lifetime, or I, I would say within the next decade, within the next eight to 10 years, we're going to be seeing silver at five, $600. And I know people are going to laugh at me. People are going to laugh at me just like they laughed at me when I said, hey, get some Bitcoin at 700. All right. Uh, but anyways, that's what I see for silver and gold, at least in the short term.
Who knows what's going to happen with our financial system that could escalate those numbers even higher. But just remember that no matter how high the numbers get, it's not the nominal value that really matters. It's what can it buy you? So once silver is $70 an ounce, can it still buy you six gallons or seven gallons of gasoline like it can today? That's how you want to, that's how you want to look at it. Yeah. And look at that, man. Mr. Tom just, just pretty much said what I just said. Can you go yeah. to 414? Yeah. He says, Rem remember when silver goes up, all electrical and electronics goes up and everything with, with it in it. Or I think that what Mr. Tom is saying is that when silver and gold go up, pretty much inflate is, is, is due to partly because of inflation and the price of things are going to go up also. So you're not necessarily getting a whole bunch more just because silver goes up. And that's what the job of silver and gold is. Why? Because it's real money. Uh, mm -hmm. It's to preserve your purchasing power so that if today you can buy seven gallons of gasoline at $4 a gallon because silver is $28 an ounce, then even when silver is at $70 an ounce, it's going to guarantee that you can still get seven gallons of gasoline with that same ounce of silver. Other than that, folks, uh, thank you all for being here. We truly appreciate your time uh, for hanging out with us. And uh, remember, folks, you are not alone. This is Gray Man and Rudy, Alaska Prepper. Bye-bye. We're out. We'll see you. Catch you on the rebound. God, God bless. bless.